Well, good evening. good evening. Welcome, glad to see you all here this evening. For those of you here in person, and as well as those of you who are joining us online, welcome this evening to our 2020 candlelight service. It's very neat. And for those of you that are only looking online, um, we'll post some pictures later, but there are lights lining the pews uh, down the center. It's, it's just a beautiful atmosphere in here this evening, so we're so thankful uh, to have you all here with us. I don't know. I, I, I just look out here and I see the candles and everything, and it's such a warm worship environment. I wish we could just do candlelight every week, you know. Uh, it is beautiful, and it's wonderful to have everybody here. And, you know, if you get a chance before we leave tonight, just go back to those back windows. I, I did that earlier today and just looked out at all the lights across the city and everything and, and uh, just take a minute and say a blessing for all the lights, for all the people that you see out there in the city and here. To have them come together and to bring us all together in the name of Jesus. Mark, you want to bring us into a call to worship this evening? Sure. Let's start off with a word of prayer, shall we? Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we come before you on this occasion, on this Christmas Eve, as we anticipate the coming of your Son. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this opportunity to gather here together to commune with one another tonight, to draw closer to each other, and to draw closer to you this evening. Lord, open up our hearts to you tonight. Open up our minds to understand and, under, and receive your word today. And Lord, we just ask that you would richly bless us as we hear your word and as we hear the story that you have laid out before us in the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Our call to worship this morning is going to be a little, or this evening, obviously the morning time, as you can tell. It's going to be a little bit different, and it's going to be responsive. And so up on the screen, you're going to see our response. Whoop, maybe not. Uh, and the response as I read the sections in here is, O come, O come, Emmanuel. So you all resound back with that as I come to each one of the sections. So this evening's call to worship is really a call to come together, to come together as a family and as friends, and as brothers and sisters in Christ, and to celebrate together that much-anticipated birth of our Savior, of the King of Kings, the birth of Jesus Christ. And our call is responsive, and after I read each section aloud tonight of Scripture, I want us all in union to commune together with our voices and respond in, O come, O come, Emmanuel. The prophet Isaiah said, the people who walk in darkness will see great light for those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The priest Zechariah said before John's birth, because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide us on the path of peace. O come, O come, Emmanuel. The Apostle John said, the word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everything. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet Isaiah, as reflected in the book of Matthew, chapter 1. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is coming into our lives in a new way. The birth of our Savior Jesus is the renewal of our hope, a reminder that Christ is coming back again. To keep watch for the light, 
for it is drawing nearer and nearer to us. So as we have the lighting of the Christ candle this evening, tonight we come to light one candle, and it is a candle to remind us that Jesus is our light. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who has come to offer salvation to all mankind. And Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And this candle stands as a light for all to see. Jesus is the light of the world. This light is not hidden under a basket, and this light is not placed in a closet. This light is placed for all to see it. For Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. And this candle is to remind us of Jesus. He is the reason for the season. He is the reason that we are all here this evening. So we're going to sing some hymns, and I invite you to stand if you're able or if you're willing. And we're going to sing the songs tonight a cappella. We're going to start off with, O Come, Ye Come, Emmanuel. The words will be on the screen. O come, O come, ye song this evening is going to be Old Little Town of Bethlehem.
next song we'll sing is the first Noel. Listen to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, 
each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to, G to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about the child. And all heard it and wondered about the things which were told to them by the shepherds. Now, if you'd like to stand, if you're able, and sing, we'll sing, Joy to the World. Join us as we sing Hark the Herald. Join the triumph. 
Isaiah 9 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. I would like us to turn our attention to the Christ candle, which is the white candle in the center of the Advent. And at this point in time, I'd like you to just focus on that as I read this next passage. There is darkness in the world. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Yet in the midst of it, there shines a light. It is the light of Jesus Christ. It is not darkness that gets rid of the dark. It is the light that dispels the darkness. He has overcome the darkness in our lives. But that's not all. He has asked us to share his light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket but put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So let us now share the light of Christ with one another as we pass out the candles. For those of you who have your candles at this point in time, I ask you to go ahead and light them. Now, as each of us has a candle before us, this is how it represents our light that we shine to the rest of the world, that we go to spread the light and to take the darkness away, to spread the light of the word of Jesus Christ to others who need to hear the word, those who are living in darkness and those who are condemned to sin and death. Let us be the light for them. And as we stand to sing our next song in here, please let us think about how we can shed our light and share it with the dark world. Let us sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is
praise you and thank you for the opportunity to gather here together in your name to celebrate your birth, to celebrate your coming. Lord, as we share our life with one another tonight, let us also remember the sacrifice that you made for us. Lord, we thank you for blessing us with the light of your life. We thank you, Lord, for taking this light and making it a beacon for the entire world. Lord, so as your light shines on the world, allow us to shine for you in this world as well. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. We come to a time now for communion. And as we gather tonight for communion, we do it together in commune with one another. We do it in remembrance of the great love and sacrifice that Christ made for us. For on the night that he was betrayed and when he was given up, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And likewise, later in the meal, he took the cup, and after he had filled it, he blessed the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And each time that you take of this bread and drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. He went on to tell the disciples that he shall not eat again of this meal or drink of that drink until he comes again. The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful way to end our Christmas Eve evening this evening, together as one body showing Christ's love to one another. Over the last month, we've talked about Advent hope, Advent peace, Advent joy, and Advent love. And it all centers around our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom at this time of year we get to celebrate his birth. As you prepare to leave this evening, we've had a year, a year unlike any of us have ever seen or probably ever will see again, a year that has tried us, a year that has pushed us, a year that has tried to dampen our hope, tried to take away that joy, tried to destroy that peace and tried to remove that love. And by the love of our God, who sent Jesus to show us how to live, we can take rest in him. Father, as we end this evening and prepare to go our separate ways, we thank you that your word has lifted us up over these last several months. Through all the pain, through the contentiousness, through people being at other people's throats, through the violence, through the fighting, through death from the pandemic. But in and of it and through it all, Father, we can see you. And we know that at the end of this, you are already there. You have already prepared us 
to come out of this. Father, may this world be a more peaceful one tomorrow. May it be more full of joy tomorrow. May it have more hope tomorrow. And may it show more love tomorrow. Let us be the beginning of that. Let us, as we leave, be charged with being your ambassadors to this dark world, being your light in this world, Father. Thank you, Father, that we can come together. Thank you that we can worship you freely. Thank you that you sent your Son to do what we could never do, and that is be made right with you. In Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Go in peace.